and welcome. In this video, we're going to show you how to take your layers and have them work differently with each other. What I'm speaking about is a thing called layer blend modes. Now, blend modes work throughout Photoshop. There are a lot of different places you can find them. For example, blend modes are on a brush. When you click on a brush and you see mode here, normal, there's all these different blend modes. Okay. If you take a look at the layers panel, it's up in the top of the layers panel and you see dark and multiple, the same blend modes you saw before minus the behind blend mode. It's not there. Now, if you take a look at what it does, basically it's the way these layers interact with each other. You can have a layer that's traditionally just set up normal, which is like this pink image here. Uh, the flower is just sitting right on top of this uh, other picture as if it was on a piece of acetate, transparent paper, and it's just completely solid where the flower is. But you can make the uh, blend modes change. Now you can do a lot with just the normal blend mode, meaning you can change the opacity. For example, the opacity will change how transparent it is. So you kind of make it fade away. See how that does? Okay. And that's nice and all. Fill works very similarly. Uh, fill will do it. It looked exactly the same in our case. But if, for example, and I'm just going to show you this really quickly, I had a uh, stroke, say, around this. Right, and I know it's actually a very silly stroke, but uh, if I had a stroke, the fill would just turn off the inside, whereas opacity turns off both. You see, so opacity affects the entire layer and all of its effects, whereas fill just does what's in the picture, and the effects have their own transparency. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn off that effect here and go back. All right. And we'll just trash the whole effects there so it's not even there. All right. So normal does have the ability you can change the opacity and the fill and that's nice, but I'm talking about other ways to make the layers interact with each other. All right. And it's actually a really good thing on the Adobe Help site. If you take a look, these are Photoshop blend modes and these are the way it works. They show descriptions here. You can see what each of them does. Uh, so, you know, darken, you know, looks at the color information in each channel and selects the base or blend color, whichever is darker as the result color. So you're like, wow, this is how can get kind of complicated. They're basically grouped. If you take a look back in Photoshop, these ones here, they all kind of darken in particular ways. These all kind of lighten and these ones are somewhere in between and these tend to be, um, opposites. And then these ones here are related to color. So the best thing is down here at the bottom of this description. And you can always go to this website or just search for Photoshop blending modes on the internet. And I'm sure you'll get this web page. But if you go down, you can actually see the examples. If you take a look, the original image was this. It looks like a, maybe part of a totem. And you made a layer that is just this yellow shape, this yellow coloring. And see, it's solid yellow, right? When you put it at different opacities, see here's at 50%. So I was just showing you uh, making the opacity lower. It's kind of transparent. When it's in dissolve, you start to see these little noisy dots within it. Behind, kind of goes behind it. It's if you were painting. Uh, clear, these are both only available in the paintbrush. But if you start going into those darken things, so darken, you see what that looks like. Multiply would make the layer look like that, and so on. So you can kind of see what these different things do. Now back in Photoshop, you can honestly, the easiest thing to do is to play with them. All right, let's go ahead and bring up our layer gravestone. And you see, I have it huge on top of everything. And I'm going to move it actually a little higher up. Let's see, maybe about there. All right. And right now it's in normal. Well, in Windows, you can just click up in here and make it blue like that. So now that it says blue and normal, I can use my arrow key and just cycle through them. So I'm going to move down on my arrow key and I can switch it to dissolve. It didn't really do much. You can't see much of the dots coming through. Let's go down to darken. So what did that do? Well, all the light parts of the gravestone disappeared and only the dark parts show up like the big dark line up here in the crack. Let's go down multiply. It's very similar, but it's even darker than what darken did. Uh, color burn. See how everything became really, really bright, like 
vibrant, rich color, and way darker, right? Way darker. Let's do linear burn. It's the same thing, but not so vibrant and darker color. So the darks, obviously, they do a certain set. Let's check out what lighten does. Lighten this time, notice that the black lines became transparent. They disappeared. And all the bright spots are solid. All right. And you can see what screen does. Color dodge, super bright, very vibrant. Linear dodge, very bright, not so vibrant. Lighter color somewhere in between. Overlay, one of my favorites, is something where you see some of the darks and you see some of the lights, but not a lot of either. Okay. Soft light, a little more gentle. Hard light, definitely definitely um, a harder look, a harsher look. Vivid light, much more vibrant. Linear light, less is less vibrant. And pin light's kind of weird. Uh, you know, I, I have trouble kind of understanding when I use pin light. You know, sometimes I just bring it in and I check it out and see if it looks good. And if it doesn't, I move on. Hard mix uh, goes way overboard. I tend to hardly ever use hard mix uh, unless I'm trying to do something really scary like the, the view from... A, a monster's eyes and they see you know different than we do or something to make something really look harsh because these colors are way blown out and if you were to try and print them they would look really bad um, difference uh, definitely starting to get weird if you're trying to just texturize something you see how things are going into like negative mode you know these were dark on the pedal originally and you see how they're bright now so it's it's definitely weird doing difference exclusion subtract divide that looks that looks kind of neat through here, but it just gets way too bright outside. You can see what hue does and saturation, color, and luminosity. The these ones down here at the bottom, you're not gonna see much because this is a very gray image to begin with. But what if it was a color, it would act a lot differently. So sometimes you don't know which one to choose. I put it back on normal. I think in my case, I'm gonna choose overlay. So I'm gonna click the arrow and jump down to overlay. Now you still have the same adjustments where you can change the opacity of these as well. So I'm going to turn the opacity down just a little bit. All right. Uh, maybe keep it around there. And then what I want to do to make sure that this is not very obvious is I'm going to just soften up some of these edges. Okay. So I'm going to click on the mask. I'm going to create a brush that's really big and fat. So I'm going to click on the brush. I'm going to choose the, uh, what is it, the fifth one over here. So it's hardness is zero. I'm going to make it very big. And to make it work more slowly, okay, it's about 1,000 pixels, I'm going to turn down the overall opacity. I mean, this is going to paint lightly as it is if I use a tablet, but I'm going to turn on the overall opacity really low at about like 50 or something percent. And watch how I can kind of just make parts of this kind of fade away. So I'm just going to make it fade away a little bit. All right, it's very, very soft, very soft. All right, something like that. And then here I want the flower to show up a little better. So maybe I'll just kind of buff around there to let it kind of go behind the flower some. All right, something like that. So the flower starts to show up a little more. Uh, let's see. Um, I really like the way that's looking. I think that's going to work, but it still needs another thing up here. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see if I can work another flower image in. I'm going to go back and drag my original flower back in. And this flower here, I'm going to use as a texture again. So I'm going to drag it over. I'm going to click on my move tool. I'm going to drag it into my lone tree. And I'm going to flip it horizontally. And it's a lot bigger. I could probably make it even bigger than this. I'm going to do a control T. I'm going to hold down shift and make it a little bigger. So it's really big behind it like that. Now this one here, I'm going to do some things. Let me see. How about I take the color away from it? Let's see what happens when I take the color away from this flower. To take the color away from this flower, what I could do is use an adjustment layer. I'm going to click on my little um, adjustment layer button down here at the bottom. And I'm going to do a black and white filter on it. Now notice that turned everything black and white. But let me show you how you can make it to where it only affects the layer directly below it. And that is by clicking this little double O. It's got a black and white. What this does is it clips it to this layer. And watch how there's an arrow that will appear right here next to it pointing to this layer. So I click it. And now it's only affecting this one layer. 
All right. And I like the way that black and white's looking, but I need to do some stuff to it. For example, I don't want it to be so, um, I guess, there. I just need to take it away the way it looks a little bit. So let's take the opacity down some. Let's, um, let's see, maybe put it in a different mode. Oh, overlay. Uh, well, let's see, maybe color dodge. Too much. Let's do um, screen. Um, you see, sometimes you just have to kind of move through these soft light. Yeah, very subtle. See, there's not a lot going on back there, but it's just enough to make it come through. Maybe I'll increase the opacity a little bit. Okay, and I think I want both of these to go underneath this. So what I could do is take both of these. I'm going to hold down Shift to where I can select both of them. And I'm also going to rename this so I know what this is. Let's rename this one White Flower. All right, and so I'll highlight both of these by holding down Shift. You see, on both of them are selected. You can also have used Control as well. And I'm going to drag this down underneath my original flower here. So yeah, so it's behind it. So the flower is still the obvious uh, subject in this picture. A couple other things you could do if you wanted to, you could maybe blur the flower. So to blur it, I'm going to go ahead and apply the layer mask. Okay, so I'm going to right click on this. I'm going to say apply layer mask. So it's now it's a regular old layer. And then I'm going to do some blurring on it. I'm going to do filter, blur, Gaussian blur, which is a pretty big blur. Let's take a look at how that looks. I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to turn this up. Let's see. How about, yeah, let's see. Something like, something like seven or eight. Okay, so you know it's very subtle. Okay, and I use this layer just to kind of affect my image. Okay, I don't want to um, go overboard with it. I don't want to make it completely cover things because then it becomes too hard to read. Also, in looking at this, I think I want more of the tree to show up. So I'm going to click on the gravestone, and I still have my really soft, large brush that's at a low opacity. I'm going to paint on that a little more to make the tree show up a little better okay very nice all right so now that I have a pretty interesting image I think I'm going to maybe I might do some other blurring or focus but I think right now I'm, I'm okay uh, I might mask some of the flower again so maybe I'll mask some of the flower so I'm gonna click back on the flower hit the mask on it and do the same thing bringing out more of the tree so the tree shows back up a little bit make that tree show up all right, I think I like that. Okay, so with this, make sure you're continuing to save over the same file. You can uh, name it whatever you want. I'm going to have you name it the final name after the last video in this collage project. And that's it for this video.